In this video, I'm going to explain how to get version 15 iOS running within GNS3. At the moment, I've got a 3725 iOS router. This is using Dynamips within the GNS3 VM. But the problem here is that the version of operating system is 12.4. I could use a 7200, but that's also going to be using Dynamips. A better way to do this is to use the Cisco iOS V image from Cisco Viral. Now the first thing you need to do is go to the GNS3 website and click on Marketplace and then click on Appliances and find the Cisco iOS V appliance. Download the template to your computer and also make sure that you have an iOS V image. Genius 3 is not able to provide that to you, so you will need to provide your own virtual iOS. One way of doing that is to buy a viral license. Cisco Viral does come with some limitations. As an example, you can only run 20 nodes when using the Personal Edition 20 or Academic version at the time of this recording. You also need to pay a yearly fee to use Viral, but those restrictions don't apply to GNS3. GNS3 only requires the Viral image for the appliance that you're using, in this case, the iOS V appliance. You're not restricted, as an example, to a limit on the number of devices that can be run within GNS3. And in addition, you don't have to pay a yearly fee to use GNS3. GNS3 is free open source software. So router one in this topology is once again using Dynamips and version 12.4 of the Cisco iOS. So I'll leave it in this topology so that I can show you the difference in operating system version, but it's not required to use the iOS V appliance. So to import the iOS V appliance, go to File, Import Appliance, and find the appliance that you want to import. In this example, it's the iOS V appliance that we're going to import, so I'm going to click Open. A summary of the appliance is shown. Click Next. It's recommended that you run appliances on the GNS3 VM. So that's what I'm going to select here. I already in this example have the GNS3 VM running and integrated with the GNS3 GUI. So click Next. We're told that the GNS3 server requirements are OK. So we can continue the installation. So click Next. Now notice different versions of the appliance are shown and I'm told that files are missing. So I could download them directly from cisco.com, but in this example, I do have 15.6.2 of the appliance. So in other words, I've downloaded the operating system for this appliance and put it into the downloads directory of my computer. GNS3 will look for the operating system files in the downloads directory, as well as the GNS3 images directory. GNS3 cannot give you the relevant images, you will need to download them from the relevant vendor. So with Cisco as an example, you will need a login on their website and an account that allows you to download the images. Otherwise, you need to purchase a viral license. So click Next. GNS3 asks, would we like to install Cisco iOS V? And the answer is yes. A summary of settings is shown. Click Next. We're told that there's no default password and enable password on the device. It also has no default configuration. It is available in the router category. So click Finish. We're told that the appliance is installed. So click OK. And now notice under Router, we now have a Cisco iOS V router available. Now when you initially drag the icon to the workspace in GNS3, you'll be prompted whether you want to upload the image to the GNS3 VM. 
we're going to want to say yes here because we want that image uploaded to the GNS3 VM. So click yes. And that then uploads the image directly to the GNS3 VM. And now we can start the appliance and open up a console to the appliance. So here's router one, which is running in Dynamips. And here's the Cisco iOS vRouter, which is currently booting. Now with the viral images, the boot up process generally takes longer than Dynamips. But as you can see here, we're running an iOS V image with 15.6 version of software. Memory information is shown. And what you may also notice is that the CPU of your VM increases dramatically when your viral appliances boot up. We prompted whether we want to start the initial configuration dialog. We're gonna say no. And as you can see, the router has now booted up. So show version. Router image is 15.6 once again. So as an example, I could give this router a host name of router two. In the GNS3 GUI, when you go to preferences, QMU VMs, you'll be able to see details about the VM and you could edit or change these values. But the advantage of using an appliance from the GNS3 website is that you don't have to configure these values. The values are configured automatically for you with best practice values. And here's an example of an iOS V layer two switch showing the amount of memory and network adapters available on the switch. Now, one thing to be aware of is you can't connect the links to an iOS V router while it's running. So you need to shut the device down first and then you'll be able to connect links to the device. So be careful, before you turn on your routers, connect the interfaces as desired. Now this is true for GNS3 1.5.x. In version two of GNS3, that may be different. So once you've made your connections, turn your routers on and open up a console and you'll be able to configure them per your topology. This is a Dynamips router. It's already booted up, so what I'll do is do some configuration on this router while we're waiting for the viral or iOS V router to boot up. So simply configure this router with some IP addresses and I'll enable EIGRP. So show IP interface brief. IP address of this router is 10.1.1.1. That's the IP address on the fast ethernet interface. Here's the loopback interface. The viral router or iOS V router is still booting up. It does initially take a while, but has the advantage that you get version 15 of code. So the router has booted up. I can stop the initial configuration dialog and type enable. Give the router a name such as router2. Go on to gigabit00, no shut it. Configure an IP address of 10.1.1.2. With a mask, create a loopback address of quadruple two. Enable EIGRP. We can see that a new adjacency is formed in EIGRP. So show IP EIGRP neighbors. We can see router two as a neighbor. On router two, show IP EIGRP neighbors. There's a neighbor relationship. To router one, show IP route. We can see a route to router one. Now in this case, because router one is running an older version of iOS, it's automatically summarizing the loopback. So, 
We can use the command no order summary to stop that. Show IP route now shows the full slash 32 IP address, which we can now ping. And a router one, we can ping the loopback of router two. So that's an example of how to import a Cisco IOS V image into GNS3 and integrate it with a DynaMips router, both of which are running in the GNS3 VM. In this example, I'm running GNS3 on a Mac, but the process is essentially the same when using a Windows PC.